Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he told his disciples that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit. In the Acts of the Apostles reading for Pentecost describes how surrounded by signs of fire, wind, and a variety of languages in their midst, the people were amazed and astonished at Jesus' promise coming true. In and among them, privately and publicly, spiritually and religiously. Followers of Jesus, we who are baptized by water, word, and spirit-filled wind and flame, we are called to this duality. We are as Christian partners in faith, participants in the Jesus movement, both spiritual and religious. Called to live out this faith that we are given privately and publicly. You see, Christianity is different from other forms of spirituality and religions in our world because our roots are both private and public. Most other religions of the world came into being following an encounter between an individual and the divine. But Jesus, who was incarnate of Mary with God working in and through her individually, additionally, after she pondered those many things in her heart, she went on to share the good news publicly with her family and then the rest of the world. And when it came time for her to deliver, Jesus was born not in a private room, but out in the open, in a stable. And that birth was not a hushed up event, but was heralded by angels and celebrated by local shepherds and by wise ones from afar. While Jesus, the Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us in the flesh, led largely a private life during his childhood, when he begins his ministry, Jesus spends three years teaching and doing miracles publicly. Jesus is arrested, convicted, and executed publicly. Jesus was buried, rose from a tomb publicly. And Jesus showed his disciples and followers that he was alive again publicly. Jesus was both spiritual and religious. He was spiritual in that he had a private and very personal relationship with God the Father. And Jesus would engage with his Father and pray privately. But often he would do that in a public place like in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was religious in that he had a public and a communal approach to his ministry. From those who discipled and followed him to those he met and ministered to. You see, he met people where they were. Most often in public places. In one-on-one -on -one encounters that changed them forever. Restoring them to wholeness and community through a religious relationship. But it's interesting that the disciples who shared in this very public ministry were privately locked behind closed doors following his death. Their religious roles were replaced with a private, scared spirituality of scarcity and insecurity. They had forgotten all that Jesus had taught them. They had forgotten all that Jesus had promised to them when they were together. Though they struggled with Jesus' nature and identity, the Gospel of John this morning tells us that Jesus promised them that they too would be identified with God and God's mission. Though he must leave them. John's Gospel also tells us that Jesus promised them that the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth, would come to them. Would come to them to accompany them, to walk with them, to comfort them, and to enlighten them. And God sends this Holy Spirit into the gathered community, not just to select individuals, not just to those who claim faith, but believers and doubters alike. Gathered together, he sends the Holy Spirit so that we can collectively know the truth of Jesus' resurrection. That Jesus the Christ, the one who was crucified, died, and was buried, rose again to take away the sins of the world. 
And for those disciples and followers who encountered the risen Jesus after Easter, they and we as well have a permanent presence of God with us, an advocate for us, the spirit of our creator and savior for us, sustaining us always, permanently linking the believing community with God. But, there's always a but, isn't there? Oftentimes, we're like the disciples. We're like those ones locked behind closed doors, removed and practicing a private spirituality of scarcity. We separate ourselves from others. We lay in a hammock or on a couch. We zone out in front of a television or a computer screen. We stay home alone. We stay locked away in gated communities. And yes, even when we go out into God's creation, many of us do that alone. Solo. Privatizing our spirituality and religion. And we... The believers and the doubters alike are leery of organized religion because so often it doesn't meet my own individual need. Somehow this product called church to be consumed as a product just doesn't fit me. It's not what I'm looking for. And then there are the times when we who gather as the church are human beings, messy, unorganized, broken, hurtful to one another. And it is in that human nature when you and me, saint and sinner, who stumble around and make mistakes by what we've done or left undone when we try and follow Jesus together, it's we together whom God sends the Holy Spirit to blow into each one of us individually and especially collectively. It's true, we who are gathered as the church are not perfect. But we are who and what God created and claimed. Beloved children of God and joint heirs with Christ, to whom the promised Holy Spirit is poured out upon. It's true, we may all hear God each in our own way. But we are bound together as the body of Christ, the church to do God's work with our hands and our very lives, spiritually and religiously, privately and publicly, as the baptized, powered by the promised Holy Spirit. It was at Pentecost that all of the followers of Jesus were commissioned personally and privately, as well as communally and publicly, to share the good news of Jesus the Christ, the one whose Holy Spirit fills and sustains us spiritually and religiously. The coming of that Holy Spirit at Pentecost fills us with a power to go out and to change the world. We are called, just like those first believers, to lives as a part of a great multicultural, spirit-filled, Pentecostal gathering, to live as Jesus lived, to forgive as Jesus forgave, to love as Jesus loved, and to pray for the peace of this world, which at times seems to have oh so little cross-cultural understanding and patience but rather seems filled with an abundant spirituality of separateness and selfishness. Spirit of life, fill our emptiness with your fullness. Spirit of power, stir our hearts afresh. Spirit of love, touch us and through us our neighbor. Spirit of creativity, Enable and empower the gifts that you have given to us. And spirit of eternity, 
draw us ever deeper into your kingdom. Sustain us and stir us to personal and public lives that are both spiritual and religious.